Okay, so this is a first off, we've never really done this before. So we're gonna do a review of a classic, A Clockwork Orange. And it's a film that came out in 1971 and is being re-released now. There's a big Kubrick sort of festival going on at the British Film Institute. So I think it might be part of that. So this is a re-release uh, of a classic, which is based on the Anthony Burgess novel. Yeah. It's one of those films that has sort of so much notoriety and infamy yeah. around it, that it almost overwhelms infamy. the actual infamy. Infamy, he's, too, he's got it infamy. Um, but it, almost the controversy, if you like, has overwhelmed the film. And the reason I wanted to go back and watch this and see it was I saw it probably when I was about 17, when everyone yeah. was like, have you seen A Clockwork Orange? Because yeah. even back then in the 80s, it was considered, ooh. Yeah. Because- There's lots uh, it, of nudity, which wasn't- Well, there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of rape, there's a lot of violence, and that's a great draw to any teenager. Yeah. That's a great draw to any teenager. All the illicit, in a sense, mm -hmm. for all the wrong reasons. But, um, but it, it was also one of the only films to be outright banned by the British Film Board, yeah. censoring board. But it was also a film that because of that, that the director then withdrew from being released or shown at the cinema. So it's had, it's had you know, so getting, getting hold of it to see it has been quite tough yeah. in the past. Yeah. I remember it being a tough For thing. For a long time, didn't they say about 20 years? Yeah, I mean, I remember as a film student, people often saying, if you got, there were two films that we tried to get copies of. And I they, know what, one Straw was, Dogs. No, well, oh. Oh, no, well, Straw Dogs is one of them, but another one was I Spit on Your Grave, which was a, a sort of video nasty. Yeah, yeah. Because we were studying horror films. And then, um, and A Clockwork Orange was the other one, which would be like, have you got, a, you've got, someone's got a VHS yeah. of A Clockwork Orange, yeah, you're joking. Yeah. And we wanted to watch it because it was a film by Stanley Kubrick. Now everyone knows Kubrick from The Shining and um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and what's the funny one with Peter Sellers where he flies off, and Dr. Strangelove and all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, so it was an opportunity to go and see it again. Given that you were 21 when it came out, do you remember it coming out? Do you remember it being a thing? Yeah, I do. And it was shocking, it was shocking. Was it? Even for me, who I always like to think is totally unshockable. Because um, Maybe you were shockable even at 21 though, Mum. Maybe I was. Did you go and see it? I mean, would you have yeah. seen it? You did. Yeah, I did see it, I did see it. Yeah, it was shocking. Because, because I mean, it's, it's sacrilegious as well. I mean, I presume, I presume the blasphemy in it must have been considered sort of... Well, I, I was going to say, it's all the... I'll tell you the most shocking thing then, and in a way, this hasn't altered one bit. Mm. I thought it was the same when you and I saw it. Is the putting together very violent or sexual acts with classical music at the top of its lungs, yeah, absolutely. if you like. Now, th that absolutely... Felt, and there's a point to that, as we yeah. know, in the story, but... That was that was shocking. I remember at the time. Well, it's all the beta, isn't it? How am I supposed it? to feel about this? Yeah, yeah. But a great bit of Moog synthesizer yeah. in there too. I love yeah. the kind of Moog synthesizer. That, okay. that, that's great. Yeah, but yeah. Look, I just want to quickly show you guys. I've got sitting next to me. Oh. It's Ma Malcolm McDowell. So we have to talk about Malcolm. McDowell. We will be talking about Malcolm McDowell absolutely in a sec. Now, am I right in thinking that there were loads of alleged suicide attempts off the back of it? There were loads of attacks, I think, that attacks. People, where people said that they'd not even that they'd seen it, but because it was withdrawn. But we'd, they'd heard about it from, the, and they dressed up in those costumes. Oh, and, and they a copycat, copycat, copycat violence, sort of beating up of homeless in people in the sort of right. Okay, yeah. let's unpack the title. So the title. It's funny, we all say A Clockwork Orange and we rarely sort of analyse what it is. It's just a kind of quick sort of uh, emblazoned word that means, oh, it's a Kubrick film that's really kind of... Um, but actually, if you just take a minute to unpack the title, you'll get all your answers to what the film's about, as we discovered the other day. Yeah. Which is well, the idea that something natural is... How, natu how, how can something of natural beauty, if you like, an orange, be structured or controlled or made sort of to operate within strict systems of control. Yeah. And in this sense, you know, Alex, the main character played by Malcolm McDowell, is a very violent, nasty, amoral person. And the film really is an entire discussion of what is good and evil. Yeah. yeah. Where does good and evil come from? Are you born good or are you born evil? What do you think? I think it's learned. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Incredibly violent man, ends up going to prison. Boy, and, and, actually boy. Yeah, young, boy. young adult. Uh, and he ends up uh, volunteering for a new process that, in, to give it a quick grab, potentially rehabilitates you. Yeah. Stops you from being, it's called aversion therapy. So that by, by, you know, subjecting you to certain things like violence and what have you, it will make you vomit and throw up and unable to commit the act. Yeah. Um, and I think as a film, I think where its richness lies, is in the idea that can that be programmed out of someone? Yeah. And if it can, 
has it necessarily gone? And does it necessarily make the person a better person? And I think it becomes a really rich exploration yeah. of what it means to be a human, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that sense, he is it, it almost exactly back to where he was in the beginning, but with, with a hatred of Ludwig van. Well, yeah, because inadvertently in the process of showing him all these kind of footage of kind of concentration camps and, and violence and rape and what have you, they inadvertently, have, and I, what I liked about this and I'd never remembered was they accidentally have a soundtrack of Beethoven yeah. and, and a particular track. I can't remember what particular Beethoven's track. Beethoven's Ninth, is it? Yeah, Beethoven's, Beethoven's Ninth Beethoven. or something. And so now whenever he's he's re rehabilitated and he hears the music, he goes to a sort of almost suicidal state. Yeah, exactly. What would you say it's about? Violence, youth, no hope. Nihilism. Nihilism. Absolutely nihilistic. And I actually wondered at one point whether it was a, it was a sort of recipe for, you know, the whole thing of if you see something enough, the torture that they do to mm. Alex, which is basically that they, they give him an overload of the stuff that he was doing and then make him sick. As you were watching it, what was your feelings? Did you feel, oh my God, this is something, were you sort of pleasantly surprised? Were you? I was absolutely surprised. I was surprised the most by the fact that it's so comedic. I mean, it's so funny. It's very funny. And it's mainly funny because of him. The, the comedy in it, I, it made me immediately want Maddie to see it yeah. just for Malcolm, Malcolm well, McDowell's uh, performance. Yeah, just for Malcolm McDowell's performance and sort of quickness and the fact that he's just super actor, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, isn't yeah. yeah. But His also face the, is remarkable. It is. But also the choreo choreography of it, which is very, very considered. Yes. And which is what makes it like, I, as I was watching it, I was thinking, how can this have been considered shocking? Because mm. although shocking things are happening, it, it's done so from a, from a distance, like Stylized. a cartoon, like a cartoon. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right down to the point that some of the scenes take place in fast forward and stuff like that. So you're well, there's a sort it. of orgy scene that happens on fast forward. Yeah. Which I just make me roar with laughter. Yeah. But what an innovative way to do a sex scene. Yeah. I yeah. mean, very almost slapstick funny yeah. at times. Exactly, exactly. And I, I don't that, remember it being that And I think at the time that might have been what was so contentious about I it, was it to, to was. frame in any way violence. I mean, today I think audiences are very sophisticated. You can frame violence, extreme violence, yeah. within the context of humour or gallows humour. And I think this, this was very much interested in that. Mm. But I do think I was surprised almost two thirds of the way through how resonant the topics were for culture today. You know, mm. the idea that are we are we numbed by the amount of violence and sex and and to what extent do we judge a young generation as being immune to all those things? Yeah. And then we've also got the eternal problem of an ever growing and burgeoning prison population. Is rehabilitation a way forward? Can you program this sort of these these terrible peccadilloes out of people? Yeah. And at the point that you do program program them, them out of people, you know, does that necessarily change the person? Do you just have a different kind of victim? Yeah. No, absolutely. And also, I do think there was a very direct dig at art. Yeah. In the sense of the the stuff that everybody had got that they picked on. Uh, I mean, the, the sort of art aesthetic in it is amazing. Feminists picked on it, obviously, for, for good reason in the very beginning, because, I mean, even the tables where they sit yeah. in their nightclub is... Uh, well, it's very Jeff Coons. Yeah, very Jeff I mean, Jeff Coons came later, but you yeah, can see... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I forget the name of the, of the sculptor who yeah. was like Jeff Coons yeah. before him, but... You know, so it's women's bodies. Yeah. And also there's been criticism, I think, even of this this time it's come out, right. is that what you realise with Kubrick is that um, the violence towards women, and it is nearly always towards women, is so sort of beautifully shot mm. and like measured in the mm. sense of one woman having her. Everybody's gorgeous looking and there's almost a slowness yeah. to that that is suspicious. Well, it is definitely suspicious. I mean, I think one you of think the things you can't... think he's a dirty old man, basically. Yeah, one of the things you can't sort of come, come to a film like this and say is, is that Kubrick clearly didn't have questionable no, ideas around exactly. That's the woman, what femininity, and what have you. Yeah. I agree. It, it, it probably is on a level a misogynistic film. It's this weird thing that, you know, all the films of Hitchcock are misogynistic, but yeah. it doesn't mean they're not interesting. No, you no. know, they were made, they're out there. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, I do think on another level, it was a film that was lampooning the idea of behavioral, th behavioral therapy. therapy yeah. I guess at a time when it was all getting a bit touchy feely. So I thought there were two ways of reading the film. You could read it on the one hand as a celebration of youth and how you can't contrast, constrain it or control it. Yeah. And that it's ridiculous to try to because you'll iron out this horrible sort of, you'll arrive at this horrible mundanity. Yeah, like. yeah. And then on another, it was a sort of criticism of it, that this is the, these are the extremities 
possibilities of what can happen. Yeah, I felt it was very much a criticism. I don't think it was... Absolutely, but I mean, you, you, you know, I, I thought he did a very good job of straddling the two so yeah. that you, you saw society and civilization trying to control this thing. And I think, let's flip to Malcolm McDowell. I think Malcolm McDowell, what I was blown away by in his performance was how, like a Shakespearean actor, yeah. he had a comprehension in every single shot of what the themes of this yeah. film were. Yeah, Whereas absolutely. in the past, I always just thought he happened to be in a film and he yeah. walks around with a bowler hat on. Yeah, yeah. He was in it. He was absolutely Wasn't in it. Wasn't he? He was, he was modern in that sense. I mean, really, really modern. modern in his performing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole film was, to yes. me, I kept thinking, my God, this came out when? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I is agree. amazing. I agree. Do you know what I thought it reminded me of? Do you remember Made in Britain? Yes. Uh, almost Roth. exactly the same yeah. sort of preconceptions that by um, counselling yes. psychotherapy you can sort of get hold of youth yeah. and youth's essential dystopian yeah. and get rid of it by sort of talking about it yeah. and you felt that that was the case in this film yeah. and the political stuff I mean it was very very ironic yeah, and then yeah. of course the locations he chooses I kept never you know I kept being sort of blown away by God were well, there places this modern in 1971 yes, exactly. where was this you yes, know, exactly. where were these places so I thought it was an incredibly contemporary feeling film. I mean, I, it was a bit too long. I was surprised at how long it was. I think it was oh, okay. 10, 15 minutes yeah. at, at too long. But it was, um, I, I was flabbergasted by how many scenes I remember. Yeah. Or remembered. Yeah, yeah. You know, the killing of the woman with the ceramic penis. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the guy in the wheelchair when he, you know, when they unfortunately rape his, his, his wife. I mean, it's a deeply violent film, don't it get is, me wrong. It but is. it's not, it's that thing of, it's not violence without a purpose. No. He's asking you questions. He's challenging. And I think that the point of any work of art, film, theatre, is to challenge you. Yeah, yeah. And if it was vaguely challenging us in 2019, you can see how it probably challenged everyone just far too much in 1971. Yeah, yeah. I think probably I'd forgotten just how truly traumatic the scene, the very emblematic scene of Malcolm McDowell having his eyes pinned yeah. down was. That went on for an agonising amount of time. It did. In a good way. And people have said that it's uh, parallels Bunuel's... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. The it does, because you yeah. see it's happening. Yeah, and I mean, this wasn't state. I mean, no, he, he had those... he's having it yeah. done. And it just seems, uh, yes, inexhaustible, And the constant application of the eye drops. Eye drops, And yeah. I thought what was really clever was, I mean, I think he showed one clip at the beginning, but he barely showed you anything he yeah. saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barely showed you anything he saw. Yeah. And again, Michael, those open eyes, mm. there was something deeply creepy about yeah. it and so it's kind of symbolic that if you look at this model he's got these eyeballs attached sewn onto his cuffs so the whole idea of the eye and yeah. what we're seeing yeah. and how we see stuff and the yeah. idea that you know so it's kind of even doubly ironic that there was this idea that copycat violence and, and suicide was yeah. happening as a consequence of yeah. this film yeah yeah um and very having, clever very clever so what did you think ultimately it was saying that you can't control well no well, I, did, did, I think it was saying that you can't control you I think it was suggesting you can't you can't I think control. It, yes, I think you can't it must control have it. However much you can try and program it out, and you can probably get the societal result you want, but you haven't actually got rid of it. No, and that was that was the the last scene, more mm. or less, wasn't it? It was back where he started, and even right up to the point what where was they the were taking the last shot, last scene. It, he's looking up to a sort of vaguely like Renoir thing with all the girls yes. above him, nude, and he's lying there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so it was sort of his imagination, but even in the scenes where he's been programmed you very much see that he's going to start to do what he wanted yes. to do before, but then he can't because of this thing. So at no point have they changed his free will. They've yeah. changed the fact that he will start to be sick. Yes. And, um, and I mean, that sounds doesn't sound much now, but then it must have been absolutely revolutionary. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, Kubrick, you're the dude. You are the dude. Tell us what you think. Go and yeah. see it. It's in cinemas now. Yeah. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.